Welcome back, uh, dear viewers, and uh, you are still watching The Breakfast Show. And as uh, we said earlier, that uh, we shall talk more about the 10th of Ramadan, which in the year 1973 coincided with the 6th of October or victory. And today we are joined over the phone uh, by General Samir Farag, strategic expert and uh, thinker. Sabah uh, al the all viewers. The anniversary of the uh, 10th of Ramadan victory will remain one of the, the biggest patriotic of Egypt and witnessed the uh, solidness as well as the, the military geniusness of Egypt in defeating the impossible. So would you please elaborate the heroes uh, delivered by the Egyptian army in that time? I was asking from you to cast the light about the heroes delivered by the Egyptian army in that day. While we are talking today, celebrating the 10th of Ramadan anniversary, the 6th of October, certainly I remember that day, the 10th of Ramadan, and then in the morning, Removing the uh, print of uh, the training uh, project of the leadership of the armed forces uh, joined by President uh, uh, Anwar Sadat and Al Shazki and others. I was there uh, in that room during the day, during the, the whole period of the war, and the training day at 9. Uh, AM removed the uh, blueprint of uh, the uh, training uh, and we put it the, uh, the crossing of the Suez Canal uh, blueprint and uh, we used to tell the people to give him uh, the hour of the crossing. No one had known that we were going to attack at 3 uh, p.m. But each level is taken at the same coincide the time in, in, in order to cover the uh, tension of attack because if it had uh, been um, compromised it would be actually known by uh, the Israeli army. Especially in that time in, there were groups uh, of soldiers. Uh, we were used to sleep in the uh, um, shelters uh, on daily basis uh, taking the blankets in the sun shine to in that day some groups of the soldiers were assigned to go out and to uh, disseminate the blanket in the, uh, in the sun in order just to let the Israeli eyes that we are doing everything is normal and we had no attention to further uh, attack and Later on, we started to take the uh, directives and get prepared and other things. Mr. General, will you please uh, elaborate on how the uh, secrecy of uh, the planning to the war? Sure. One of the most important uh, stages of attack, which was uh, the strategic uh, distribution uh, plan, and how to do uh, to deceive uh, the Israeli part and uh, uh, Ahmed, engineer Ahmed Nabi was responsible of just uh, assignment uh, one of the small groups that lasted uh, from the war. One of the things as I said in the morning the conscript uh, used to uh, take off uh, the blanket and uh, the same day we've announced that we're going for Umrah in Ramadan to the south and once the Israeli uh, side knew that uh, the commanders are going to do this, such a thing and in that time in, uh, some of the people stayed enlisted for seven to eight years and we've announced that we'll be uh, going uh, 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 graduated as uh, said in Kissinger in his book uh, in that uh, colonel uh, said uh, 
said to Mr. President that we want to see easy on the plan, then how? Tell him to just send the Kissinger two months before that we had it fed up and we're not going to do the attacks. The Russians refused to, uh, to provide us, so we're attacking uh, weapons and Therefore, uh, President Sadat expelled the, the uh, Russian expert. So, so he told him to send a, a messenger to Henry Kissinger that the Russians uh, are, were expelled, so please uh, solve all the problems because we're not going to do attack or the way to war. And General Ahmad Ismail, the uh, security counselor, were sent to Henry Kissinger, and that was written in the book, and said to him that we wanted to make a very individual and private meeting to talk freely. They met in a restaurant, in a dinner, and said that uh, uh, President Sadat uh, said that we're not going to do with uh, the war and solve out the problems, please find a solution to satisfy all the parties. Uh, Kissinger, in the same day, said the same thing to the Israeli side, said by saying that President Sadat requested to solve out the problem in peace, and that was one of the seated uh, plans as the Israelis were very convinced about this side. And uh, about 200 measures were being taken, and to yet the, the, it was a great plan made by Colonel Ahmed Nabil. What about the, the strategic decision um, plan, plan uh, achieved by the uh, Egyptian army? The second plan, we hoped that the enemy never felt that we are gathering the troops to, uh, to get them prepared that we're doing the combat uh, mobilization. In, in the defense, they were uh, uh, disseminated on the, in the land, but in the attack, we used to disseminate all the equipment just at the bridges. Therefore, we made a plan that as if we were in a project, send the troops entering the, in the Suez Canal and last it for a few days. When they get back, to leave in a part and get in another part in the ground. The Israeli side, once they see this, uh, each time they found that uh, they raised the preparation level. And uh, the fourth and the fifth time they never did this procedure. And they started to feel that uh, the Egyptian people uh, were deceived by the Egyptian army. And that was one of uh, the main problems. Uh, uh, all the main things were done in the same plan. As the bridge, as I said, thirdly, we've managed to put the parallel line and make an, a sand uh, shelter on the other side by saying this to the uh, right side that we're not going to do the campaign, to concede them that we're not going to do the campaign. And it was a plan of 200 articles that was one of the things that made the, our army to be successful, not to enter the uh, or wage the war, and we succeeded to make the surprise of the 10th of Ramadan, 6th of October 1973. How did the, uh, this move to uh, regain the land in peace? It was a very good uh, question. So we've lasted in six years, and this time, 
were uh, announced but the no peace, no war and no one has known when it's come to end and once we've done this operation it was strategic timing from President Sadato, the armed forces not the compact on to regain Sinai in full but what the compact is to attack and to possess a very limited area of 15 to 16 kilometers in depth and as the umbrella of the air defense missile to prevent the Israeli army to enter in the crossing. So that was the goal, is just to move the operation, is just to, to uh, get or to seize the 15 to 16 kilometers of Sinai and at the same time to tell the Israel that we're not going to end the, the war. So this uh, attack has the goal is just to seize a part of the land and do more casualties of the Israeli side and I we used to debate Erkaron in 70, 1975 by saying to Sharon that your casualties is equal the casualties and the loss of 48 and 56. That's why Israel never wished to increase the losses of the war. Therefore, the 10th of October victory was just to mobilize the things in order to reach the peace agreement. Mr. General, can you please cast a light at the sacrifices of the Egyptian army before and after the war? It's in a good question, and I want to say that we've already may the war in 1973, and I could say that the army has joined the war alongside with the people. That day, that was a very dark day, we were drawn from Sinai. I was in the western strip of the canal on the uh, 9th of uh, June at uh, 5 p.m. The army were destroyed and the Israeli flag was high off the eastern side and the, the uh, the 5 a.m. the president uh, chose to, to resign and today the wars of the fourth and the first generations and uh, the army or rather the president resigned but why the Egypt stood because it was uh, packed up by the people and practically in such a war with uh, three cities were uh, de devoted, divided in uh, Port Said and Ismailia and Suez and all the families went to live in families, each two families in a class between them is a curtain, no one uh, projected uh, everyone said yes, this is for Egypt. And give you a very clear fight example. I was in, in the front in a Bahirat lake. We used to build a missile shield because uh, they were due to the agreement or the initiative of Rogers. And so these bases. Uh, uh, cement pieces built by the Egyptian uh, hand. In that day, the Israeli aircraft attacked a site behind us and then returned back and the Britannian leader said to me to look at the site before we get the ambulance vehicles from Fayyid military hospital. I found a hole around of 20 meter steps and that was uh, containing 10 workers who were mounted. We never seen or managed to differentiate the organs, bodies, uh, heads and hands and legs were disseminated. At 6 a.m. the second battalion 
or the group coming to do the work, well, they would, it's a good indication that, that, that it's not only the army who made the victory, but with the people. As the missile wall that prevented the Israelis to intensify their defense troops, that's why we see that such a war. That we were very honest by saying that that such a war was the victory of the army alongside with the people. Major General, how the war proved the way to the start of the construction of Sinai. Today, let's imagine if the 73 war wouldn't have happened, so Sinai would have been in the hands of the Israelis, such as in the Golan and the Western Strip. But what took place in the, in the 1973, we've managed to move on. Therefore, we've made four battles. The first one, 1973, we've liberated a part of Sinai around 50 kilometers, and then the political battle when president Sadat so made the country with the agreement, and we managed to complete the liberation of Sinai in full. That was the second phase, and the, followed by the third phase, which is the tribunal uh, battle when Dr. Mufid Jihab and Israel refused to give us uh, Taba region. And the fourth phase that President Sisi is doing today, as stipulated by Al Sadat agreement, that, that uh, said that, that the A zone is military and B zone is civil forces, and uh, the third zone we had. No military president. Yet the president Sisi has succeeded to get control of the armed forces until the borders line. Today we have had, we have the troops, the militarized. Six years ago, we used to combat terrorism in Rafah and Sheikh Zayed. We used to excuse Israel as according to the agreement that we shouldn't have any troops. But the force is completed by President Sisi, you have had a, a full control of to Sinai by the Egyptian army and the Egyptian um, conscripts who were in, are actually on the borders between Egypt and Israel. Mr. General Samir, can you tell us about the preparation war and its result that lasted six years and I was one of the soldiers uh, uh, participated in this war. I wish to say that uh, that's why the war of attrition learned us how to do the war. And we had no uh, experience uh, as the whole army used to be in Yemen, do uh, war in mountain area. So we had no war. But uh, the war of attrition that lasted six years, we've learned do a hundred uh, of bombardment uh, every day you started to build up the earth uh, uh, forces that were destroyed after 1967 even the Air Force College were divided into three divisions uh, as Bill Bees were in the center of the Israeli fire and Bill Bees uh, College were only the first grade is training only on the helicopters and the second year were in Mars and he used to train in uh, um, more advanced helicopters and the third degree or grades were in El Sudan and uh, President Hosni Mubarak used to be the Air Force College commander he uh, used to review the students in Bilbis in the first year and the second year in Matro and the third year in Sudan. That was only for the Air Force for troops. So the war Federation 
we've already destroyed a light uh, destroyer that was drowned down and we used to say that it was a great event in the military science. In the war of attrition, we planned and fought the crossing, so that's why it was a very important time for of the Egyptian army. I wish to thank you, Mr. General Samir Farag, a strategic expert, and I think I thank you for having me, Mr. Thank you. Let's